Welcome back to the Infographics Africa channel. The Mali Empire was one of the largest and most powerful empires in African history. To learn more about it, check out the first two parts of our three-part series. In today's episode, part three, we will discuss the fall of the Mali Empire after the death of its great ruler, Mansa Musa. The empire reached its peak in the 14th century under the rule of Mansa Musa. However, it began to decline in the 16th century due to a combination of internal and external factors. This video will cover the crisis that occurred after Mansa Musa's death. Internally, the empire was weakened by a succession crisis and civil war. Externally, the empire was threatened by the rise of the Songhai Empire. By the late 16th century, the Mali Empire had been reduced to a much smaller state and eventually dissolved in the 17th century. This video will cover the crisis that occurred after Mansa Musa's death. I have divided this video into three chapters that discuss the fall of the Mali Empire. These three key factors heavily contributed to the decline of the empire. Succession crisis, Mansa Maga, the son of Mansa Musa the Great, ruled the empire as the Sankore while his father was on pilgrimage and took over the power after Mansa Musa's death. Civil war. A power struggle between Mansa Maga's brothers led to a civil war that weakened the empire and made it vulnerable to attack. Rise of the Songhai Empire. The Songhai Empire was founded in the 15th century by Ali Kolon with the help of his brother Suleiman Nar. Let's begin our adventure into the long decline of one of the most iconic empires of the continent. If you want to support this channel and get more videos like this, please take the time to like and share it with your friends. Thank you. Succession crisis, the death of Mansa Musa in 1332 led to a succession crisis. His son Mansa Maga ruled for only four years and his reign was a disaster. After Mansa Musa's death, the empire suffered from declining leadership and fights over succession. Mansa Musa's brother Suleiman was second in line to the throne and expected to assume power after Musa's death. However, internal conflict between the Hunter Association and the elite persisted within the empire. Suleiman was closely affiliated with the Hunter Association and participated in important missions in cities such as Gao and Timbuktu. He arranged multiple exchanges of noble hostages with surrounding kingdoms. Prior to his journey to Mecca, Mansa Musa spent considerable time taking prisoners. As mentioned in our previous episode, he spent 10 years solidifying the Mali Empire's status and eliminating any kings who posed a threat to his power. One of the small kingdoms that agreed to Suleiman's terms was the Young Songhai Kingdom. At that time, the Songhai were only a fishing and trading center on the Niger River. King Soni Ali agreed to give away his two sons, Ali Kalan and Suleiman Nar. The two young princes were under the close eye of agents from the Hunter Association and were supposed to stay inside a specific zone of the capital city, Niani, at all times. Before traveling to Mecca, Mansa Musa left his deputy, also known as his Sankore, in charge of administration. The deputy was his son, the young Mansa Maga. This caused concern among many people in the Hunter Association, as they valued meritocracy above everything else. In their view, the young Maga, who was soon to become Mansa, had no experience, was shy, not a good warrior, and more interested in book. They believed the empire needed stronger leadership, as the situation in the empire was rapidly changing. After Mansa Musa left, it became clear that the king was no longer present in the palace, and things began to fall apart. Mali's power weakened due to palace intrigue, which prevented an orderly succession of imperial power. Smaller states also desired to break free of Mali's rule and reap the benefits of the salt and gold trade. Mansa Musa died shortly after returning from Mecca, Traditional oral stories relate that even at his funeral, the division within the empire was clear to everyone. You were either with Suleiman and the Hunter Association or with Mansa Maga and the Keita nobility. The day after the funeral ceremony, Suleiman wanted to claim the throne, but Maga was supported by the nobles. After weeks of back and forth, during which more than a few threats were made, the Hunter Association and Suleiman finally gave up power and Mansa Maga was officially named as king. Things were indeed moving very fast in the Mali Empire. On the night of Mansa Maga's coronation, the new Mansa learned that two princes had escaped from the watchful eye of agents from the Hunter Association. They cleverly escaped at night in disguise. Unfortunately, the agents had no way to track the prince's location. 
Mansamaga already knew he could not trust these agents. The two brothers in question were Ali Kolon and Sulia Mannar of the Songhai Kingdom. They escaped back to Gao and started plotting their revolution. Mansa Maga was a pivotal ruler in the history of the Mali Empire. His rule was strengthened by the arrival of Islam, which became interwoven with existing beliefs and practices, producing a flexible and syncretic system. He expanded education projects throughout the kingdom, fortifying the image and importance of the nobility across the entire empire. During his reign, he further consolidated the state structure, which had been established by Sundiat Akeda a century before. This created further problem with the Meritocratic Hunter Association. They lost their power over the years of rule of Mansa Maga, and it is believed things reached a breaking point and they decided to kill him. There is not much information available regarding the death of Mansa Maga. All that is known is that his uncle Suleiman was somehow involved in his death, although the details remain unclear. However, Suleiman installed Marijarta III, the young son of Mansa Maga, and the grandson of Mansa Musa as the king. Suleiman took control of the empire himself as the oldest capable ruler, since the young king was still a baby and unable to rule. If Suleiman was hoping for a smooth continuation from there, he was wrong. After this coronation, which was the third in five years, a series of insurrections occurred. Many noble hostages escaped from the capital as a result. The first people to achieve independence from Mali were the Wolof, who resided in what is now Senegal. I've talked about this empire in part two. They now formally established the Wolof Empire around 1350. On the other side of the map, in the east, the nomadic Tuareg seized Timbuktu. This conquest had enormous commercial and psychological consequences. A relatively small but united group had occupied the richest city in the empire and one of the major sources of imperial wealth. The greatest challenge, however, came from a rebellion in Gao that led to the rise of Songhai. This once vassal state of Mali conquered Mima, one of the empire's oldest possessions. Three years later, they took Timbuktu from the Tuareg. The succession crisis resulted in a civil war between the supporters of Suleiman and the supporters of the Songhai princes. This weakened the empire and left it vulnerable to attack. Ali Kolon and Sulia Manar grew up as hostages. Prince Ali Kolon accepted his education, but always was very angry towards Mali. After 30 years, Ali Kolon and his brother escaped to Songhai and established the Sunni dynasty. For many years, the Songhai people were ruled by Mali and forced to pay taxes. They were also required to participate in ceremonies when invited by the Mansa and to kneel before Mali kings as a sign of submission. This was a humiliating process that the proud Songhai had always hated. When Sunni Ali rose to power, he promised to return the lost cities and ports on the Niger River to the Songhai people. He was a refreshing presence to anyone who met him. He was not as devout a Muslim as the Keita nobility. This religious tension played a major role in the events that followed. Sunni Ali had a daring plan to conquer Mali. He intended to use his navy to control the Niger River and his army to conquer the trading cities of Jenna and Timbuktu. Sunni Ali asked the governor of Timbuktu for help because he was angry about the high taxes that they paid to Mali and the Arab nomads who controlled Timbuktu. The distance from Gao to the outskirts of Timbuktu was 100 miles. Timbuktu was the richest city in the region and widely known as the city of fortune. It also served as an important trade center. There you could find the best horses and the best blacksmith in all of West Africa. It was home to large schools and libraries that formed capable minds. Moreover, it was the knowledge center of the region. The city was home to hundreds of scholars who were renowned for their expertise in Islamic law, medicine, and astronomy. Many of these scholars came directly from Mecca or Egypt. Any ambitious ruler like Sunni Ali, who had the city under his control, would be able to exert huge power over the surrounding kingdoms. The Arab nomads guarding Timbuktu abandoned the city when they feared losing to Sunni Ali's large army. With no one left to fight him, Sunni Ali conquered Timbuktu in 1468. However, he earned a reputation as a harsh conqueror due to his cruel massacre of citizens attempting to leave the city. His plan was to use these capable citizens to his advantage in the war he was foreseeing with the Mali Empire. But many of the scholars were Islamic and the thought of being under the rule of the Songhai was too much for them. After conquering Timbuktu, Sunni Ali desired to conquer other cities. 
For seven years, he attempted to capture Jen, but found it challenging because it was surrounded by water. He almost gave up, but the young king of Jenna surrendered because his citizens were tired and hungry. This time, Sunni Ali showed mercy and did not allow his soldiers to plunder or harm the people. He soon left Yenna to conquer the lands between Jen and Timbuktu. The Songhai Empire emerged in the 14th century in what is now modern-day Nigeria and Niger. It conquered many more of Mali's provinces. This weakened the Mali Empire further and ultimately led to its collapse. Eventually, Songhai became larger than Ghana and Mali combined. That concludes this series on the fall of the Mali Empire. Throughout this series, we explored the story of Mansa Musa from beginning to end. I hope this series has provided you with new knowledge about the magnificent Mali Empire. The role of this empire in African history cannot be overstated. For many people outside of the continent, the tale of Mansa Musa and his gold fascinated explorers and traders. I also hope this series has helped you understand what it took for Mansa Musa to create such a great impact on human history. The empire was never the same after Mansa Musa. He was a unifying glue between the many cultures under his rule. I created this channel to provide you with a deeper look into African history. If you found this video entertaining and informative, please give it a thumbs up so that more people can see it. Receiving more likes will allow me to create new videos. In the coming months, I intend to tell the full story of the Songhai Empire. If you want to stay updated, remember to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.